Good day, my beloved sisters and brothers. Welcome you to the Holy World. Today, I would like to share with you the message of Our Lady Queen of Peace to Pedro Regis. Someone will attack the church again, then Satan will act with fury, and the church must guard the real presence. So, let's share this video with your friends, with other believers to spread this message, to help them know what we will have to pay attention to on a dark day in March. But before we go further, let us start by delivering these short prayers, asking guidance, and glory from Our Lady. O oh Mary, my mother, I kneel before you with a heavy heart. The burden of my sins oppresses me. The knowledge of my weakness discourages me. I am beset by fear and temptation of every sort. Yet I am so attached to the things of this world, that instead of longing for heaven, I am filled with dread at the thought of death. O Mother of Mercy, have pity on me in my distress. You are all-powerful with your Divine Son. He can refuse no request of your Immaculate Heart. Show yourself a true Mother to me by being my Advocate before His throne. O refuge of sinners, and hope of hopeless, to whom shall I turn if not you? Obtain for me, then, O Mother of Hope, the grace of true sorrow for my sins, the gift of perfect resignation to God's holy will, and the courage to take up my cross and follow Jesus. But above all, I pray, O dearest Mother, that through your most powerful intercession, my heart may be filled with holy hope so that, in life's darkest hour, I may never fail to trust in God, my Saviour, but by walking in the way of His commandments, I may merit to be united with Him, and with you in the eternal joys of heaven. Amen. When I first heard about the defacing of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, I thought it was perpetrated by someone who was mentally ill. After all, who in their right mind would do anything like that? Then I went back to the statue and took a closer look. Except for blows to Mary's face and the loss of both of her hands, it is intact. In reality, the security video shows the masked guy going over the fence with a hammer. He snatched the hands and assaulted the face. This does not appear to be accidental. The face of a person expresses most clearly the person. As the Ark of the Covenant, Mary's beauty exudes the Divine Presence. This is a source of pain for Satan and his minions. Furthermore, the hands are the visible tools of the person, carrying out the person's will. In this situation, Mary fully fulfills God's intention. Her continual presence in the world crushes Satan's head and frustrates his destructive anger. Followers of Satan use sacred objects of the Catholic Church in a blasphemous manner in their rituals. Most notably, the followers of Satan steal a consecrated host and desecrate it in their black mass. It is more than likely that these hands of Mary's statue will be desecrated in a satanic ritual. I am appalled and saddened at the increasing number of people who are practicing witchcraft Wicca, and Satanism. But the words of scripture echo in my heart, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan has sent a lot of his minions to this world and raised the harshness for us. The statue of Our Lady was damaged also considered the first sign of the devil. By this accident, she wanted to send us the urgent message to tackle down the unfortunate events then. The day of darkness truly happens and we, as the children of God, need to pray to seek righteousness, mercy and to guard ourselves in safety. On the 30th of October 2021, Our Lady had sent the first message to Pedro Regis, she cautioned that, Satan will act with fury, and cause some huge damages in the year 2022. She started, Dear children, I am your mother, and I love you. I have come from heaven to lead you to heaven. Be meek and humble of heart, for only thus can you accept what comes from God. Turn away from the world and live turned towards paradise, 
for which alone you were created. Tell everyone that God is making haste and that this is the right time for your return. Repent, for repentance is the first step to take on the road to holiness. The devil will act with great fury against those devoted to me but do not be afraid. There will be no defeat for those who love and defend the truth. Your weapon of defense is the truth. Seek strength in the sacrament of confession and the Eucharist. Your victory is in the Lord. Courage. I will pray to my Jesus for you. This is the message I give you today in the name of the Most Holy Trinity. Thank you for having allowed me to gather you here once more. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen, be at peace. You are on your path to a future in which many people will be tortured and murdered for protecting the truth about the Eucharist. Whatever happens, let keep faithful to yourself. Heaven must be your final goal. Onward and upward, fearlessly. When this message was widespread, everyone come to the church, and ask the priest how to prevent this happen, and what would be the consequences then. At first, the priest told them the second message. He mentioned that they must guard the real presence and must not allow someone to attack the statue. The real presence here is our God. He now is the present in the Eucharist in his body, blood, soul, and divinity. The church must protect and guard his real presence of him. The devil will send his followers to extinguish the light of the Eucharist in the lives of Christians but victory will come for those who love and defend the truth. When you feel weak, seek strength in prayer, the gospel, and the Eucharist. Accept and testify to the teachings of the true magisterium of the Church of Jesus Christ. Pray is the way for us to help us go through the attack of the devil. Being strengthened with all power, according to God's glorious might, so that we may have great endurance, and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of his holy people, in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now, let's pray. Lord Jesus, evil is such a terrible term, Yet your word regularly uses it to represent the polar opposite of good. While we are all capable of sin, I pray for your protection from those who name good as evil, and evil as good. Keep us safe from those who plot against righteousness, and who distort truth into lies, in order to achieve their wicked goals. May your angels always be close by, eradicating fear and fighting against dark spiritual forces that we cannot see. Assist us in casting down every imagination and notion that our adversary seeks to employ to elevate itself against you. When you died on the cross for us, and were risen on the third day, you delivered our spiritual adversary a fatal blow on Calvary. While wickedness continues to roam, the power of your name, and blood rises to overcome and bring us triumph over every evil plotted against us. While evil behaviors may distress us, we employ the God-given armor you have provided to stand firm. You will deliver justice for all the pain and unnecessary violence directed upon your children in due time. Until then, we will stay in your presence, committed to your goals, and look to you as our supreme commander and protector. Lord, help us to resist temptation and free us from misery. You are the mighty one, the one who will ultimately bring all evil to light. With you, Jesus, we are safe. We praise you, Father in heaven. We wish to be able to express our gratitude to you at all times. We eagerly anticipate your reign and the redemption that will liberate us to the depths of our being, to the glory, gratitude, and honor of your name. 
be with the throngs of people who have come hungry and thirsty for you. Bring relief to people with pure hearts, and let them realize that the power of your kingdom is actually here on earth in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.